Hey guys, it's Vampire Mike from Sega CD Universe. So I just finished up watching a movie which took, I don't know, six hours to watch because I'm working from home. So I'm checking emails, answering calls, doing this, doing that, and then going back to the movie. It just got to, it got to be a very busy day. Uh, the name of the movie is uh, Will Work for Views, The Lo-Fi Life of Weird Paul. So if you don't know who Weird Paul is, I'm probably going to pronounce his name wrong. It's Weird Paul Petrosky, Petrosky, sounds Polish, Petros, Petrosky. Um, Paul's picture had popped up a few times on my Facebook, as you might know this person because you share mutual friends. Eventually, I added him, and I watched some of his videos and stuff, and he's a pretty big character. So the movie is a documentary, uh, you know, real movie about Paul. It's not a oh, real movie. Documentary about Paul and what he's into and what he does. So Paul is a little um, different looking. He is he has this kind of old school bowl haircut that he said he adopted in the documentary from one of the Ramones. I, I forget which Ramon it was where he had this kind of like bowl haircut with like longer hair in the back. And he's had the haircut, I guess, ever since or has gone back to it. He's sort of in that regard with the interesting haircut Reminds me a little bit of Chili Bull Mullet Man, who I had done a video about his documentary a while back, except Paul, um, you know, works and, and has a lot of interesting things he does uh, in the lo-fi genre where Chili Bull Mullet Man, I don't believe works. I think he's just more of like a local celebrity. Uh, Paul has a little bit of a bigger reach. So part of the documentary talks about how Paul growing up didn't have a lot of friends and he used to make hundreds of hours of VHS videos and vlogs of himself from childhood to his teenage years, but wasn't really able to get them out there until now when YouTube and, and you know Instagram and all these things have been around. He edits things in a very lo-fi tech sort of way. He uses, from the video at least, he uses um, VHS tapes and older computers. Uh, it doesn't look like it's digital cameras. He uses like old cameras and stuff and has like old fashioned ways of doing things when he records voiceovers and things for himself. He was showing that he has to record it at the same distance of where he was sitting prior so that the voice matches up with the audio. So he does things in a very um, eccentric and different way than most people would now in 2020. The documentary is from 2019, so it's fairly recent. Um, as I said, he's a very eccentric character and he has this great lo-fi aesthetic in his videos where things look like they have almost like a filter on them from like the VHS or beta days. He has this like funny sense of humor where it's very, very goofy, but sometimes throws in a tiny bit of like a crudeness to it. Nothing horrible, but definitely a little, uh, a little, little racy. Um, he's a collector of old school media and nostalgia. So one of the other things he talks about in his documentary is how on his YouTube channel he does pickup videos. He goes to like thrift stores or Goodwill and he picks up a lot of like old records, old video games and VHS tapes, but he also picks up knickknacks. So he'll do pickup videos on little toys from the 70s and 80s or comic books from the 80s that he finds, things of that nature. And he gets a real kick out of kind of living in the past in that regard. He, You could see he's into finding these little items that maybe you know, we're big in the 80s or whatever, or the early 90s, let's say pogs, stuff like that. Um, he also sings and plays guitar, and he puts out these really kind of silly songs about, like, peanut butter that he likes, or uh, there was one about a guy getting some kind of bone condition, and it was like a skeleton, and he lifts up the, he lifts up the um, blanket, and there's a, like a foam skeleton lying there, or like a blow-up skeleton, and He's singing about how he's not a doctor, but he's going to help out the this, this skeleton with his bone. So it's like lots of goofy, just silly kind of skits with music and um, all kinds of videos. Um, in the documentary, he goes to Hollywood, California to try and kind of get himself out there, but gets a little disenfranchised because people there are ignoring him and aren't really paying attention much. That's sort of how Hollywood is or how California was when I was there. Everyone's sort of in their own bubble. And they're not really looking at you. They're, they're folk, you know, we know it's the mecca of uh, entertainment, but unless you are something, most of the time it seems pretty difficult to kind of break in in Hollywood. He, um, he does a lot of this like nerd rap 
Um, sort of like when people do rapping about like get video games and old movies. He sings and does rock songs about movies and all other types of things. Um, and he uploads a lot of home videos and skits from the 70s and 80s that, as I said, he, he um, filmed on a VHS uh, camcorder when he was a child. He, uh, <clears throat> in the documentary, they show that he works part-time at a Spencer's in, I guess, a mall. Um, but he has a huge drive and conviction for what he's doing for fun. And he's very hyper-focused on getting subs on YouTube, uh, getting likes on Facebook, getting comments. And he makes sure to always go back and check his subscriptions and comment back on the comments on YouTube. He doesn't let things fall by the wayside. But because he's technologically using old equipment, he's also taking longer to make videos and edit videos that others could probably do in, let's say, an hour or two. He's taking six hours. So it seems to be kind of um, affecting him time-wise as well. Uh, I do definitely um, commend him for, you know, staying so focused on commenting and replying to people on his YouTube channel. And as I said, he's definitely a character. So for him to get thousands of comments and to be able to respond to everyone and not let them kind of fall off, it takes a lot of time and work. <clears throat> but he seems like in the documentary, he wants to make his life and his focus, um, you know, making videos and pickups and um, doing these like scenes and skits and doesn't want to always have to work retail. Uh, Paul's girlfriend uh, is also an interesting character. She reminded me of a very young um, Amanda Plummer from, she was in uh, Pulp Fiction as uh, Honey Bunny and she was in The Fisher King by Terry Gilliam as the girl with the short haircut. She kind of reminds me of her a little bit. She has that kind of cute high pitched voice. Um, she even looks and acts like a throwback to like the eighties, the way Paul does. So I guess they, you know, there's a, a, a lid for every pot, so to speak. So they definitely uh, seem to mesh well with one another. Um, as I said, he, he's definitely hyper-focused on becoming something on making YouTube and vlogging and all these little eccentric ideas, his focus, in my opinion, it's fun and interesting and cool, but he does let certain things fall by the wayside that I think should probably be more focused on. But I'm also like that where I really want to focus on other, you know, more important things to me before I kind of dip into whatever well I'm, I'm looking at. For instance, he was saying like his house has some issues and, you know, he doesn't have enough money to pay for certain things to be fixed. So that like there was like some of that going on in the movie where the house was older and it needed some repairs. I think one of the sinks or the toilets uh, weren't working. And I think, you know, it's difficult to make time to fix things or hire someone to fix them if you're, you know, working less hours to make a pickups video instead. Or And I think that at points, and this isn't downing Paul, he's doing what he enjoys, but I think at points you have to realize, you know, sometimes doing the unfun things or the things that cost money that you have to do need to be done over the enjoyable stuff. You know, if something comes up in life and I have to fix something that will deteriorate my home, I get that done way quicker than sitting down to play a video game. You know what I mean? Um, that was the only kind of, I wouldn't say it's a negative, but a critique I had on Paul or his lifestyle. Uh, hopefully when he watches this, he doesn't get upset with me with that comment. It's just kind of my uh, kind of view on things. Uh, overall, I think the documentary uh, will work for views, the lo-fi life of Weird Paul, which is on Amazon right now to watch for free. I'll put a link down in the description if you have Amazon Prime. It is a fun, interesting look into a big character from uh, Bethel, Pennsylvania. He is definitely a relic of the 80s and maybe late 70s. I believe he, I believe he said he's 49 years old currently, but he's still at it. He's you know doing little concerts and shows and um, all kind of eclectic things to, uh, you know, bring humor and leave a legacy in his words so that when he does go one day, people have all these videos and clips and things of him. I think that's very important to him. And it's important to most people or lots of people to leave some kind of positivity behind once they do go. So check out Will Work for Views, The Lo-Fi Life of Weird Paul on Amazon Prime. I will put the link to Weird Paul's YouTube channel and the documentary in the description. And um, 
If you're into kind of quirky, eccentric characters, I think you will most likely find Paul intriguing. Thanks, guys, for watching. It's Vampire Mike from Sega CD Universe. Be good.